Do you have a paranormal encounter you'd like to share with us? Send us an email with your story for a chance of it being featured on Weird World. Journey into four more true and spine-tingling time-slip tales where reality's boundaries are challenged and the past intermingles with the present. Accompany Maggie as her bus ride takes an uncanny detour to the 1940s. Tread lightly with Erica through a village lost out of time. Witness Amelia's eerie encounter with medieval echoes under an old oak tree. And join young Tom as he stumbles upon an apparition out of World War II. Such accounts demonstrate to us that time's fabric is more malleable than we think, intertwining past and present in ways beyond our comprehension. Bus trip back in time. It was the early 1970s and Maggie Bell was eager to move her family to a new suburban housing development being built near the rural village where they lived in Scotland. Money was tight, but the local council had approved them for a low-cost terrace in the new community. Before committing to the move, Maggie wanted to go view the housing estate, but her husband James was too busy with work to drive her. One Saturday morning in late summer, Maggie decided to take the bus out to see the houses with her four children, two young sons and slightly older son and daughter. They lived in a remote town, had to take one bus to the main station, then transfer to another line headed for the village near the housing development. The trip went smoothly until the second bus let them off at the end of the line, announcing it would go no further. Maggie asked the driver for directions to the new estate. He pointed them down a rural road, saying another bus headed that route would be by shortly to pick them up. Maggie herded the children along as they waited at the rickety old bus stop. After some minutes, a bus approached and they boarded, but Maggie immediately noticed that this was no modern public bus. It looked like something out of the 1940s, with wooden seats and manual controls. She considered they must be using old decommissioned buses out in this remote country area. When Maggie asked the driver about the housing development, he had no idea what she was talking about. Feeling increasingly uneasy, she moved to the back, where she noticed the other passengers dressed in remarkably outdated clothing, like wartime era costumes. The motherly woman seated next to her kept glancing with curiosity at Maggie's stroller, a new compact collapsible model that had recently come onto the market. No one on board seemed to have seen anything like it before. Growing more frightened and disoriented, Maggie debated what to do as the bus lumbered along. When it finally reached the end of the route at a tiny rural village, the driver announced this was the last stop. Maggie stepped off and frantically asked some locals about the housing estate, but no one knew of any development in the area. Spooked, Maggie hurried with her children into a small cafe, only to find it too was straight out of the 1940s, with antique furnishings and prices to match. The family stood out sorely amongst the other customers. Maggie rushed them back outside and onto the same bus going the opposite way, avoiding eye contact and praying they would somehow return to the modern day. To her enormous relief, when they disembarked back at the main road, normality had returned. A modern bus soon arrived to take them home. Maggie listened in shock as her kids excitedly compared notes about their bizarre adventure. James dismissed the story as nonsense when Maggie told him later that evening but she knew deep down that it somehow slipped backwards in time. Yet James refused to indulge such fanciful notions. He insisted they must have just gotten lost and ended up in an isolated village that maintained an old-fashioned way of life. Despite her husband's dismissal, Maggie could not shake the chilling feeling that she and the children had somehow slipped back to the 1940s on that bus ride. The details were too vivid. The costumes, the cafes, the puzzled reactions to her modern stroller. She became convinced living on that land where the strange time warp had occurred would lead to more bizarre experiences. Within a week, Maggie announced to a baffled James that she no longer felt comfortable moving to the new housing estate that she had previously been so excited about. Though it made little logical sense, she could not ignore the visceral dread that by relocating there, she would be putting her family at risk of getting lost in the past again. 
James thought his wife was acting quite madly, but he eventually agreed that if she felt so unsettled by the area, they could find another place to live. Secretly, Maggie was relieved. She made up an excuse about preferring to be closer to her sister, and soon they'd secured a different home. Over two decades later, Maggie still pondered that day and what forces had briefly sucked her family back through the years. Though she still had no solid explanation, the frightening ordeal had awoken within her a new awareness about the possibility of worlds beyond what humans could easily perceive. She hoped never to experience such an inexplicable event again, but it left her forever changed by opening her mind to the profound mysteries of time and space that lay beyond everyday existence. The Vanishing Village In July 1987, Recent university graduate Erica Wilson embarked on a solo cycling trip across the English countryside. One evening, she stopped to camp near an isolated village called Faithorn in Wiltshire. After setting up a tent, Erica decided to take an evening stroll through the village before sunset. As she walked down the main road, she was struck by how quiet and still everything was. None of the houses had lights on inside, and there were no cars parked along the street. The only sound was the chirping of birds in the trees overhead. Rounding a bend, Erica came upon the village pub. A weathered wooden sign out front declared it the Crooked Crow Tavern, established 1843. Peering in the dusty window, Erica saw the interior look deserted. Cobwebs covered the taps behind the bar. Stacked chairs and stools sat undisturbed atop tables. Perplexed, Erica continued exploring the village. The small market appeared long closed, with cardboard coating the windows. The post office sign was so faded it was barely legible. Everything had an abandoned, frozen-in-time feel about it. As the sun began to set, Erica quickened her pace back towards her tent. She decided she would ask locals in the morning for an explanation. However, upon awakening, Erica saw no sign of the village at all. There was only an open meadow where she distinctly remembered Faithorn being. Erica searched the area but found no remnants of the village whatsoever. Maps and directories from the local library also showed no record of any village called Faithorn ever existing in the area either. Erica knew the bizarre experience defied all logic, but she had no doubts. Somehow, the previous evening, she had stumbled upon a village lost in time that had since vanished once again. However, how could a village less than 100 years old just vanish, not only out of existence, but seemingly out of history itself? Some have speculated that what Erica actually experienced was not merely the echoes of another time, but the echoes of what could have been a time slip into a parallel reality. A Ghostly Gathering on a chilly October evening in 2018, Amelia Edwards was taking an after-dinner stroll through the local cemetery in a small Cotswold village when a strange sight caught her attention. Just ahead she saw spectral figures materialising by an old twisted oak tree near a weathered gravestone. As Amelia cautiously moved closer, she realised the figures were a gathering of villagers dressed in medieval clothing, simple tunics and gowns in drab hues. Their forms appeared semi-transparent, flickering like candle flames in the darkness. The villagers conversed softly in an antiquated dialect Amelia struggled to comprehend. After observing the ghostly gathering for several minutes, still hidden in the shadows, Amelia accidentally snapped a dry twig under her foot. The sound seemed to echo loudly in the silence. The medieval villagers turned their heads in unison towards the noise, their gaze piercing Amelia to her core. Then their forms slowly faded away, dissolving into the night. Amelia hurried home, her body shaking with adrenaline. She told no one of the outlandish incident, concerned they might think her mad. She wondered if perhaps on that spot centuries ago, some tragic event had occurred, trapping the moment in time on an endless loop. Amelia never attempted to revoke the ghostly gathering again, making sure to stay clear of the area. The soldiers return. It was a sunny Saturday afternoon in the summer of 1975 
when 12-year-old Tom Wright decided to explore the woods behind his family home in the outskirts of Birmingham, England. As he wandered along a dirt path dappled with sunlight, he stumbled upon a small clearing ringed by tall oak trees. Tom was startled to see a uniformed soldier sitting on a tree stump in the centre of the clearing. The soldier, who appeared to be in his early twenties, wore a standard British army uniform that Tom recognised from photographs and movies from about World War II. He had his head down and seemed to be intently polishing the boots on his feet with a rag. Tom cautiously approached the soldier, who finally looked up and met his gaze. The soldier had a bushy moustache and his face looked dirty and unshaven with stubble. His uniform was worn and faded, covered in grass stains. What are you doing here? Tom asked with curiosity. The soldier simply stared back at him silently. His eyes had a hollow, haunted look that sent a chill down Tom's spine. After several tense moments, the soldier slowly vanished before Tom's eyes, like a ghostly apparition. Stunned, Tom blinked and glanced around the empty clearing. The soldier was nowhere to be seen. Shaken by the unsettling encounter, Tom sprinted all the way home. But when he told his parents what had happened, they assured him it must just have been his imagination. However, something deep down inside Tom knew what he had witnessed was real. Over the years, he would continue to vividly recall that lone soldier in the woods, a ghostly residual vision of the past forever imprinted upon the landscape. 